Y'all are so cute. Y'all can go ahead and sit down. Come on now. Making me embarrassed starting off like that. Hey! Howdy! Yeah, I'm from Texas, so that feels better. That felt really good. Yes, this is Scar from uh, Lion King. If some of y'all are going to be distracted by that, trying to figure it out, I thought I'd get it over with right now. Let you know. Some of you have ADD, and that's fine. You're like, what's on her shirt? I can't listen to a thing she's saying. In your mind, you're probably singing jalapenos, chicken and cheese on a bun, pink pajamas, penguins on the bottom, pink pajamas, pink, yeah, no? That's like a strong debate that that's what the real lyrics are in our house, since our kids were little. In a weird way, I need to ask this and find out what's going on. All right, how many of y'all have seen the video that I posted that made me go viral and you know why I'm called Chewbacca Mom? Go ahead and raise your hand. All right, now here's the opposite. How many of you have not seen it and you have no clue? Confession's good for the soul. Go for it. Good, good. I can still shop at, Char at Target because of that. The second, the second group of people, that's amazing. Um, I had a video, let me explain. Be, being having a moment with a, a toy mask, okay? I don't play Chewbacca's mother in a Star Wars film, <laughs> nor do I have an unsightly issue with body hair that earned me a horrible nickname. <laughs> hey, Chewbacca mom, I'm gonna shave those legs. No, that's not what happened. <laughs> it's not like I got a squirrel over here. And it, anyways. Um, I don't know what would have been the second option. I'm just being real. It didn't come to me that fast, and I promise you if it did, I wouldn't have said it anyways. I had a filter. So uh, I had this video that I basically was just posting online for some of my mama friends that were probably sitting in a carpool about to pick up their kids, and it's a four-minute video where three minutes are laughing. It's really highbrow comedy. No, before I went to bed that night, I had nearly one million views on that video. Yeah, I don't know a million people, so <laughs> I have since learned privacy settings on Facebook. <laughs> They're real. And um, not only that, but I also didn't just go viral that night. By the time I woke up, while I was sleeping, it went mega viral. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Like. 24 million views when I woke up within about six hours of sleep. Right? Right? I had no less than 15 to 20 voicemails and emails from BBC, NPR, Good Morning America, The Tonight Show. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For some strange reason, I felt like I could either be Jason Bourne and I needed a suitcase with passports. <laughs> like I needed to hide. You know, like in Back to the Future, they found me. I don't know how, but they found me. Um, I felt like that. And then at the same time, I felt, this is cool. Who else can say that they've had a viral video? Well, kind of a lot of people. But <laughs> not in my block, right? And so I just was thinking to myself, this is kind of a moment. But I got to be honest with you, from that moment, people started messaging me one common question, one common phrase, one common topic. And it was all about, I can't remember the last time I laughed like that. I can't remember the last time I had so much joy that I just had a good old belly laugh. Right? And then what I start seeing is this is really a moment of confession and realization of a deficit that we've had in our society that we were missing an aspect of our society that actually does and serves us well, and that's joy. It's like we lost the ideology that joy was possible for even me. I don't know about y'all, but nobody gets a free pass on life. Do y'all understand that? Right? Nobody wakes up with immunity and says, well, you're not going to have a hard life. You're going to get through it easy, and everything you do is just going to be fun and rainbows. <sighs> Does anybody feel like they've lived that life? I'd like to meet you. We'll take a selfie together. I'll make you viral. <laughs> because I've never seen that. As a matter of fact, Scripture tells us in a way that's much different. It says there is no one righteous, not one. Not one. And because of that, because we struggle against just our natural inclination to do the opposite of what God's perfect plan for us is,
We live lives that are broken and messy and kind of hurt us every single impasse that we face. And not only that, we have people in it with us that also hurt us, leaving trauma, leaving scars, leaving wounds that sometimes don't go away overnight. As a matter of fact, we find ourselves then going after 20 years dancing around an issue wondering why we're joyless. And this, I'm coming. I don't know who said that. I'm coming on. And we wonder why we find ourselves in a moment going, I forgot how to laugh. I can't remember the last time I just played with something and had a good moment. Well, you know, for me, this kind of highlighted that maybe I was somebody to carry that message of hope. That God maybe opened up a viral video just so I could talk about it and get the conversation started. So I thought I needed to read the Bible about joy. <laughs> like, I, have you ever been told that you're something that you never knew you were? <laughs> yeah, like all the time. I'm told that I am like skinny and beautiful and <laughs> sexy. Anyways, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, was, I, I didn't, my filter stopped there for a second. Sorry, guys. Um, I was told all of a sudden by popular demand, we need you to be our joy spokesperson, Candace. We need you to give us joy. We want whatever you had in that moment that's very one-dimensional on my Facebook feed, and we need that. I want it from you. And I'm sitting here going, y'all, joy for me was something that I had to fight for. It was not something that I got an extra measure of and nobody else did. It wasn't like God was doing some things up in heaven when he sent me down to earth and he sees the line of people passing by that day and he goes, hold, hold, hold. <laughs> Gave her a little extra joy. <laughs> Angels, you don't have to sing right now. It's okay. That was good. You know what I'm saying? Like, some people just assume that because you're laughing and you're happy, or either that you're fat, you're just happy. <laughs> Y'all didn't need to laugh at that that hard. <laughs> I understand that all of a sudden my life had come to a crossroads of me being pinned as your joy spokesperson. I decided, God, I'm going to come to you with this and just ask you, what is, what is your joy? What do I have that maybe this world is feeling like they're missing out on? Am I missing something here? You know, you know what I discovered first and foremost about joy? It's not the main thing. It's really not the main thing. We want it to be. We want it to be, oh, I want joy so bad and I want to live so happy and I want it to be everything that's going to make me feel fulfilled. But joy is a byproduct of something greater at work inside of you. You know, Galatians tells us that joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So here's the deal. When you plant an apple seed, it's going to grow an apple tree. You cannot plant an apple seed and expect it to grow a lemon tree. When you put like seed in the ground, it'll grow a like product. But many of us have been putting in seeds spiritually of bitterness, resentment, and trauma that's been unhealed and trying to reap a harvest of joy. It won't happen. It's impossible because it is a fruit of something greater at work in you. So the thing that I now see very clearly with my eyes is this. You ain't going to get joy if you ain't got the Holy Spirit. Bottom line, like some of y'all get that because you clapped a little bit, but the rest of y'all are like, that hurt me in my gut. I don't know. <laughs> what is that feeling? That's, that's the spirit of God himself testifying to the word that was just given. Because I'm telling you, apart from him, there can be no good. You can do no good. You cannot muster up a smile. You cannot be fake enough and make it work with your happiness. It has to be a direct result of the indwelling of a Holy Spirit that has the fruit, that is the seed of truth, to grow it in you. And because of that, whenever you try to do that apart from him, you get a grin and bear at theology. I was told to have the joy of the Lord growing up in church. And I hated hearing that, y'all. Because I thought that that meant just grin and bear it. Well, dadgum, you're supposed to have the joy of the Lord. 
Did you lose your job, Larry? Let's have the joy of the Lord about it. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> if I have the joy of the Lord about that right now, I look like an idiot. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's almost like we've traded the reality of what the Holy Spirit should be working in our lives for this false, inauthentic thing, and it smells and reeks on you, and the world sees it, and they identify it quickly. You know what the, the, the thing is, is that Christians should be the happiest people that we know. You know what I'm talking about? Like the happiest. I want to just ask you an honest assessment. Do you think by and large that's the world's opinion of us? <laughs> Some of you are like, I don't know. I don't have worldly friends. <laughs> that's okay. You can cuss in private still. We got you. What? What? Did that hurt? Sorry. Sorry. I know, honestly, that, that we feel this pull to want to represent Christ well and our faith well and Christianity well. And we're trying to do it and we're trying to muster up and we're trying to be so sweet. But I don't trust anybody that talks like this. Well, hi, Candace. So glad you're here. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Do you know how that just feels when you're around somebody that has a false sweetness and a false joy? It's not the truth. It's not attractive. And it actually sets up guards. Absolutely. And let me tell you, somebody said it's fake, and I'm like, was that in my mind or out loud? That was, <laughs> it's like, Holy Spirit got really audible just then. <laughs> this is a spirit-filled church. Wow. I, I found myself now thinking, what this world, because listen, you got to remember, this is a viral video that opened up to the entire world. It didn't open up to a church atmosphere at a revival camp, and now I'm the greatest Christian whatever. This happened to everybody, whether or not they could like it or not. And believe you me, I've got a comment thread that lets me know whether they liked it or not. I wish you would have done more stuff with Darth Vader. I don't, I don't get why she chose Chewbacca. That was a dumb idea for a viral video. Right, moron, because I'm trying to make a viral video. I'm just being myself. Man, that felt good. I don't know if y'all needed that. I did. You want to know the crazy thing, though, is that most of the criticism that I got and most of the rude comments I got, if I clicked on their profile, it was somebody that said they loved Jesus. I ain't playing. I ain't playing. I, gotta play. I ain't got to play with y'all. I ain't got nothing to prove. I ain't got nothing to prove because God put me on this stage through a laugh. So let's deal with that. You know what? What I've discovered since, though, is God opened this door to the world. But what he really wants to do is, is a work in the church. And he wants to do a work in us first. You know how easy it would have been over this past two and a half years for me to really put my tracks down and gone in a direction that would have been ignoring of the body of Christ. Y'all don't really realize probably how easy that would have been. And I have prayed for many times that he would do anything but make me talk to the church. <laughs> you ministers know, y'all get it. <laughs> Pastors are like, I, I'm going to laugh quietly because, yes, years. <laughs> Prayers I said this morning. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but let me tell you something of what God's been doing and why he's putting me in this room tonight. And I want you to come back tomorrow morning, like our pastor said, if you don't have a home church. Because I want you to hear the rest of this. It's not like I'm trying to bait and switch it and be like, tomorrow morning I'm going to be, well, I might be weirder. I don't know. I can't promise that. But, <laughs> but I want you to just get the basis of what's happening in this moment right now. God's opening a door for this stay-at-home mom to be an author and speaker, not to expand my ministry or platform, but to break things in the church that need to be broken. You want to know why I know that? I was at um, a conference in a spirit-filled environment. And I like to, when I'm attending one of those, just kind of observe. 
I become a wallflower, not a participator. I feel like there's a lot of competition in the participation category. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're already doing fine for us with your tambourine. I don't need to bring anything to this game, right? <laughs> so that ribbon's twirling great on its own. I don't need to jump with you. Um, and in this environment, I was like, I'm just going to watch. And what I found out was this. I was just worshiping and singing with my eyes closed, and I was tapped on the shoulder by an old man in a bolo tie. Y'all remember what bolo ties are? Aren't they great? I think we need to bring them back. I'd love if my husband was wearing one when I like, came home. Like just a bolo. Not just a bolo tie. How many single women do we have in here? My Lanta. What is that? <laughs> I mean, it's okay, girl. I got you. We'll pray. Um, but he's this elderly man, and he obviously had not seen Chewbacca mom, didn't know who I was from Adam. He's just in the room watching me watch. And he comes and taps me on the shoulder, and he goes, I'd like to give you a, a, a word, a, a picture of what God showed me while I was watching you worship. Can I do that? I, I've been raised to respect my elders. So I say, sure. All the while being very cautious, right? And he goes, I just want to tell you what God showed me. He gave me a picture of you being a bull in a china shop. <laughs> Never wanted to hurt an elderly person before. I'm sitting here thinking, oh, this, this guy's feisty. All right, what we got next? He said, let me explain, let me explain. He said, you are like a bull, meaning like this. You just naturally who you are take up space when you walk in a room. And when you, yeah, like I, you could stop there and I want to punch him even more. But, uh, uh, but when you walk in a room, you don't try to. You walk by stuff that we've put on walls that we love more than we love God. And when you walk by it, you break it. Just by being yourself. You, be, you break some things that have traditions just by walking in a room. And they need a break. Do you understand that for me, I don't see joy as a message that I come and bring to you and say, get happy. Smile a little bit more. Fool them non-Christians into Christianity. Get them in, and then they'll see it really sucks. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but if I knew it was going to be this hard, sometimes I wouldn't have made the choice. Anybody else? I can be honest. But the reality is, is the church is called to a place, and we got to break some junk off our walls and quit playing around so that we can offer the world something of substance. The reason that the world sees us and looks at us and they see something false is because we've got many things that we've put up on a shelf that have higher priority and it's got to come down. It's got to come down. The first thing is this. When you're trying to get a fruit of the Spirit, you cannot do it apart from the Spirit. That's just bottom line, the basics. Let's start there. You cannot see a fruit develop without it being planted by the like seed. So can I just, I think I can. You've already told me I could. So you can take that back if you want to. We'll rein it in in the morning and we'll, re we'll rework it. Um, <laughs> but for now, what we're going to do is this. I'm going to tell you a vision that God gave me. And I don't often share this because it kind of gets creepy with Baptists. And uh, I grew up Southern Baptist, so I can say that. Because I've been one of them sitting out there that goes, oh, she's starting to talk about hallucinations. I mean, visions. <laughs> she did drugs. I'm going to pray for her sin right now. Anyways, um, I was in my kitchen after all this has happened. This is recent. This isn't like a, oh, this happened 10 years ago. This is Chewbacca Mom happened. I was in the middle of writing books, traveling and starting to speak and also negotiated a television show with TLC that didn't end up going through because I had morals. So, I, I'm just gonna tell it like it is. 
Um, have y'all seen one successful marriage last through one of their shows? So God warned me about that. Praise him. Um, I found myself, though, in this really weird season of so many crossroads, doors opening left and right, and I'm like, God, I just want to do whatever you want me to do. I just really, that's really what I want. Let's do it. Let's do it. I want to do that. And so while I'm cutting up some vegetables, which is rare because I don't eat vegetables, um, <laughs> so God made it a remembrance point, like an altar. <laughs> He's like, this is odd for you. Here. I will make a moment. You will remember forever. He's cutting up some vegetables, and I can only describe it as this, as though I automatically saw in my mind's eye stuff in the room with me while my body was kind of catatonic, just standing still. But yet I went through this whole thing in my mind that I'm about to share with you. Call it a vision, open vision, whatever vision, I don't care, right? Um, I don't even know the terms for that. I ain't studied that up. So if y'all got information, great. But for me, I was sitting there, standing there, wow. And all of a sudden I turn around to look and I see God kind of putting some stuff in my pantry. And I'm like, hey, God, what you doing? He's like, I'm helping. <laughs> I said, oh, cool. Where's Jesus? <laughs> and he goes, he's in the hallway. He wants to see you. Go see him. And so I walk over to the hallway in my mind. I get to the hallway, and he's hanging up pictures. And they're all pictures of me. And they're like little memories that I have of my life. And I said, why did you choose these pictures? And he goes, these are some of my favorite moments with you. Did you know that? These are some of my favorite moments. And he was just kind of showing them one to one. And I'm like, wow, sixth grade Candace, really, with the bangs and hairspray right here? Okay. He's like, I love her. And so I was like, that's so good. I said, well, hey, dinner's about ready. Let's get back. I said, come on. He comes into the kitchen with me. And as we're passing by back to the kitchen to stand where I was at originally, I look outside in my backyard, a big glass door. And how many of y'all seen the show Lost? Y'all remember that show? On that show was this smoke monster. It was a black ball of smoke. And it made chain pulling sounds in it. Like, you know, it was kind of scary. And it had lightning in it. And it was like the most mysterious thing on that show. And if you watched it and you saw it, you were jacked up every time you watched it. Like you would be like, am I having a vision from God before I go to bed in this dream? Or did I have bad pizza? Or was it lost <laughs> that I watched because I'm scared to death? <laughs> I look outside my window while I'm walking with Jesus and I see this smoke. But I see wrapped around it a dog chain staked in the ground. And I, I, in fear, grabbed onto Jesus, and I said, what is that? And he said, that's the Holy Spirit. He said he's kind of messy, mysterious, and a lot of people don't like to welcome him inside. They like to put him outside where they can kind of manage him and make sure he doesn't destroy stuff. And, I, and, and before I know it, I'm cutting vegetables again. The reason I feel like it's important to tell you this is because when you have the Holy Spirit as the seed that's growing some fruits of himself inside of you, it's going to get messy, unpredictable, it's going to seem mysterious at times, and you're going to find yourself going, I feel out of control. I feel as though I don't know what to do with this. The good news is, is that you're meant to be, you are designed by God to be out of control. You are designed by him to live in submission to the Holy Spirit. Like literally, your very fabric of your new nature when you accept Christ is to be a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come, which is very much so operating in heavenly places. It says we are seated with Christ in heavenly realms. And do you realize that he is calling you to a higher standard of allowing his Holy Spirit to work inside of you and to speak to you and to use you? This is getting really dead quiet in here. Y'all are like, man, Chewbacca mom's not fun at all. <laughs> Was this a sermon about joy? Because I'm missing it. I think I'm saying some stuff that y'all are trying to put the pieces together because let me tell you, you can't grow what isn't inside. And you can't grow if it hadn't been allowed to be inside. Did you know that you can quelch 
the Holy Spirit. You can snuff out the Holy Spirit. That does not mean you are more powerful than the Holy Spirit. It means that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman and is kind and isn't forceful upon you. Can I dare say this? I'm kind of looking at the age group of the, the women in here. I'm going to say a phrase that's going to seem a little bit polarizing. The Holy Spirit doesn't rape you into doing what he wants you to do. He partners with you in a very loving, loving way. And here's the deal. You're taking this Southern Baptist girl all of a sudden out into the world sharing a message to the church of something that needs to be broken. First thing I can see on the wall, the first plate that needs to come down is simply this. Get the Holy Spirit. Stop being so afraid of him. He's actually what you need to be effective. Hey, listen. Did you know that the word of God tells us that your gifts and calling from God are irrevocable? Let's think about that for a second. The gifts and call of God are irrevocable. So if they are irrevocable, the only tactic the enemy has is to make you ineffective. That's his only objective. That's his only gameplay. Like if you looked in his book of what he's going to do next, make them ineffective. That's really it. Do you want to know how he makes us ineffective? Let me just point out some stuff. He tells us lies that we believe far more than the truth about ourselves, about the gifts and calls on our lives, about what he can do through his Holy Spirit power. We believe those more in the natural realm than we believe the very fabric of heaven can come when we call upon it. Like Jesus told us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when God says to you that I am who I say you are, that should hold more weight than what the enemy has been trying to show you by the life that you've been living. And Jesus clearly told us in John 14, 15, all of that, all of those chapters, he says, I'm the, van, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me, I'll abide in you. And apart from me, you can do no good. Apart from me, try it. It ain't doing good. I almost missed the table. Did y'all catch that? It's good. It made me feel confident in whatever I'm going to say next and not like an idiot. <laughs> Church, we got to start trusting that the Holy Spirit is for us and will use us for bringing the kingdom come. Here's the other misconception that we have that needs to be broken. And I'm going to ruffle some feathers, and that's okay. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with that. I've heard all my life, and maybe you have too, that Jesus loves you so much that he went to the cross for you. Yes, but can I add the truth of the word to that? Hebrews 12 tells us, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. You think that his love is what held him there? It was the joy that he knew that you'd be with him that held him there. The father love, for God so loved that he gave his only son. But Jesus, get it straight, his motivation was joy the entire time. The entire time, he saw into the future what we could not see. How do I know that? John 17, look at the last things that he prays before he goes to the cross. He said, Father, I not only pray for myself, but I pray for those that are going to be with me. Not only the ones that are here with me right now, but the ones that are still to come. He saw into the future that you would be his. That you would be an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven and you would bring it with you. And he said, there's joy in that. I will lay down my life. Joy is a powerful motivator. And some of y'all wondering why you ain't doing nothing good and healthy in your life. Maybe it's because you don't have the joy set before you. And you feel as though you've lost it altogether. And there's no hope of ever finding it again. You know, I've met some of the most hopeless people in this world. 
I'm, I'm serious. I'm talking about like, I went to Tanzania about a year and a half ago. And while I was over there, this is why I wore my Lion King shirt tonight. <laughs> and it is the villain, if some of y'all are curious as well. Scar's the bad guy. So now you're really confused. We're like, I don't know. <sighs> She's saved. <laughs> She's... Can somebody point me to the false prophet passage again? <laughs> Sorry. I went to Tanzania and I have a tattoo on my arm right here of Simba from the Lion King. And it simply says, remember who you are. Do y'all see the Lion King? Okay, raise your hand if you've seen the Lion King so I can get it better than uh-huh. Okay, good. So if you haven't, it's like 30 years old and I'm going to spoil some stuff, but you've had some time to watch it. Okay. So, <laughs> Lion King is simply this. You have the very beginning of the movie, a coronation scene. Come on. I sang the song for you earlier, Pink Pajamas, Penguins on the Bottom. And in this moment, you see young Simba, a brand new baby cub, lifted before his community. And they all bow, and they're like neighing, the, the zebras neighed. I didn't know that that happened, but it makes sense, they're kind of horses. Um, <laughs> and then on top of that, you have this opening scene where you see a jealous villain. I believe Scar is the villain above all Disney villains. You can fight me later. That's fine. <laughs> if you're like no Ursula, then that's okay, but Scar. <laughs> Ursula looked a little bit too much like me 10 years ago, so I ain't going to be mad at her. <sighs> Why y'all hating on Ursula? She was cute. <laughs> Body language. Anyways, um... <laughs> She was just had mis misplaced desire. Anyways, um, <laughs> Scar is jealous of this baby king. He's jealous of him so much so that he plots and devises a plan to kill Mufasa, the father. And Mufasa is the king. I mean, he's a bad mamma jamma king. It is the voice of James Earl Jones, y'all. Come on, Field of Dreams. Come on, Mufasa. <laughs> Everything the light touches. I mean, I can't even do it, but I'm telling you, it's just rad. And then you've got the voice of Jeremy Irons as Scar. Would you have a British lion in the middle of an African safari? But that's... <sighs> mm. I'll just let some things go. <laughs> I'll let it go. And, and he devises a plan to take out the king... And when he does, he successfully kills the king, spoiler, and then he ends up telling the young child who's naive in their faith and knowledge of the world around them, he convinces that little young Simba, it was your fault. You're responsible. And then Scar tells Simba, here's what I want you to do, run, run away, Never return. What would your mother think? I love this movie because many of us, the moment that we give our life to Jesus Christ, there is a coronation that happens in the heavenly realms where he presents us as a new son or daughter. And at that point, we are baby infant Christians. And we don't, we don't really knowing all of our identity yet. We're learning it, Right? But don't be deceived. There is an enemy that prowls around seeking to devour you. And with that enemy, he only has the ability to make you ineffective because he knows if you knew who you were, you'd be the daggum king of the jungle. You know the difference between shame and guilt? Guilt says you did something stupid, get it right. Shame says you are the thing stupid that you did and you will never be better than that. Don't even try. And the lion that comes against you is speaking lies of shame over your life saying, you're not the king, you're not the future king. What would your family think of you? Run away from your destiny, never return. I'm here to tell you, 
there's a beautiful scene that takes place that makes the Lion King worth every second. In a vision, on the wind of change, Simba runs into the wilderness and sees his father in a cloud. What? Hey, spirit-filled Disney Lion King, okay. <laughs> I see you. Woo. And his father says to him, you have forgotten me, so you've forgotten who you are. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. Remember. <laughs> it's it what I had to work with. Um. <laughs> but from this scene, Simba takes off and goes back into battle. Says, I'm going to usurp the authority from my stolen throne and get it back. Did you realize that while Simba was out in the wilderness away from his memory of his father, he was living a life that said, no worries, Hakuna Matata. Oh, it looks like it's really joyful. We're singing songs all day. <laughs> We're eating these bugs. <laughs> Slimy yet satisfying. <laughs> hey, but don't be deceived. He was eating something that was way beneath his means because he was a predator of the jungle. That wasn't meant to be his meal. The church, y'all, we are a bunch of Simbas. Hmm. We are a bunch of Simbas lost away from our kingdom. And we're eating things that we don't need to be eating because they're of this world. And we got bigger meals. Hey, holla, any foodies? We got bigger meals. <laughs> And I got to tell you something, many of y'all, who's that trying to heckle me up in church? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Usually it's my nine-year-old daughter that goes with me places. She's 10 now, so maybe that stopped, who knows. Um, I'm telling you right now, we are called to greater things. You are called to a greater destiny, and you've forgotten who you are. And there is coming a point, if it already hadn't, where God will show up himself to you in a very radical way and say, remember who you are. It's time. It's time. We need to break something in the church. First thing you got to realize is who you are. The keys of the kingdom. I don't know if you get it. I don't know if you get it. <laughs> I really don't know if you get it. We're not living here for this kingdom. You can spend all your days with this false joy living out in the rainforest all you want, pretending like there's not a care in the world. But in that world, there really isn't a care. But the kingdom has some priorities and things to get straight. And your calling draws you into that. You can't deny it. <laughs> it's, it's the fabric of who you are because you have been made new in Christ. And your shame is not as powerful as you've been given, been given it power. It's not. It's there to make you ineffective. And if you're a dummy and you keep on sinning, which a lot of us do, surprise, that happens all the time with me. Nobody ever told y'all that from stage? <laughs> Let there be some freedom that drops on you tonight. I am not the sum of every sin that I do. I am not the sum of every sin that I have done. I am a child of God. Does this give me permission to go on living like an idiot? It's not very beneficial. It may be permissible. 
I may have permission, but it, it doesn't do me any good, doesn't do the world any good, doesn't do the kingdom any good. But know this, I am not my sin. You want to know why I know that? Because the Bible also tells us that Jesus, huh, he who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. I'm not my sin, neither are you your sin. Jesus is sin. What? Like, that sounds like heresy. <laughs> it's not, y'all. He became your sin in order to give you a new name called righteous. Hey, I don't do a church hop often, but I might. Because here's the deal. If you know who you are and remember who you are, joy isn't a hard thing for you to grow. It just overflows. But instead, you got some great musical numbers going on full in the entire rainforest. And this is not the greatest show. That was a nod to the greatest showman. Did y'all catch that? <laughs> <laughs> Some of my musical friends, I caught you. We're, we're right there. In your mind, you're probably singing right now. How do we rewrite the stars? Say you'll be mine. Like, it's okay. I had to sing it with you so that we'd move on. It's okay. <laughs> Come on, live. Come on, live. Go and light your light. Let it burn so. Anyways, okay. That satisfies some of the ADD? I got you. We're good. Okay, move on with me now. You're not fooling anybody with your fake joy. What you, what you need to do and what the world desires of you is for you to remember who you are. So I got this tattoo because I wanted to remember who I am every single day. This was before the Chewbacca mom thing. I got this tattoo of this cool little lion. I find myself in Tanzania. And right, I'm in like the bush in Tanzania. No cable. No Netflix, no Hulu, yep, and then I got all these kids around me and they see my arm, you want to know what they all start saying? Simba, 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 and I'm like, how do y'all know the Lion King? Right? Because y'all ain't got nothing out here. What in the world? Disney making it hard. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then my interpreter leans over and goes, Simba is Swahili for lion. <laughs> yeah, I felt like an idiot for like. <laughs> <laughs> but then I started a new game that was only private to myself that I was playing uh, with trying to discover what other words were Swahili. <laughs> from Lion King, so I was like, Simba, Mufasa. <laughs> and then they were like, Mufasa! And now I'm like, I don't know what I said. What does Mufasa mean? And they were like, Father King. <laughs> what? Whoa! Mind blown, I know. I know. And then I was like, Rafiki. <laughs> and they were like, Rafiki! Rafiki, Rafiki, and I'm like Rafiki, hey, hey, hey. and it means friend, counselor, Nala, Nala means mother and kindness, and I start seeing this tattoo on my arm, and God said, remember who you are, it spans across the universe, I have made all people in my image, Remember who you are. Come on, y'all. There's some major joy that was happening in that bush right then. <laughs> Never mind, I had a filter. We're going to stop that phrase. <clears throat> I'm recovering. Give me a second. Some of y'all are sinners and you got why I'm recovering. That's okay. <laughs> I would much rather, if we're going to be a broken people, 
be broken for the things that bring the kingdom of heaven instead of be broken without a purpose, aimless, and without hope to this world that needs it. And many of y'all have come into this place tonight and you're saying, I'm broken. Good little message on joy. I got you. But you don't know the life I've lived. You don't know the diagnosis. You don't know the aging parent I'm trying to take care of right now. You don't understand the kind of child with special needs that I have. You don't understand that I've been given just less than a year to live. Come on, Candace. You're going to talk to me about joy? Tell me something real. I ain't got much time to remember who I am. I'm just trying to make it. The message I offer you tonight is not trite whatsoever. Nehemiah tells us very clearly, the joy of the Lord will be my strength. If you're going through a season that is tumultuous and uncertain, and you have no clue if you're ever going to make it on the other side, I know the God that holds that season in his hands and is on the other side. And it may be time for you to find joy in that season so that you can have the appropriate strength you need for that season. Joy is not just a fanciful, fun thing. Now, let me get this straight, too. Oh, I like ruffling feathers with this one. How many of y'all have heard that you got to choose between joy or happiness? I've, oh, some of y'all haven't. You're like, no, never. We didn't grow up with your jacked up theology, Candace. <laughs> Checking out, journal's closed. <laughs> <laughs> I found myself being told multiple times when I would try to talk about being happy, I really didn't mean happy, I meant joyful. Oh, well, she didn't use, she didn't mean to use that word happy. She probably meant to say joy because joy is better. It's deeper. It's more specialer. <laughs> Y'all, nobody puts happy in a corner. <laughs> Y'all are sinners, dirty dancer, watching the movie. I love putting in pop culture qu quotes because I find all y'all real quick. <laughs> Y'all are like, huh? <laughs> Listen, happiness, joy is not an either or, it is a both and. This is not a Candace thought, this is in the scriptures. Let me be very clear. Matthew 5, when Jesus is on the Mount of Beatitudes, he is speaking to a group of people. 5,000 of them, plus women and children. So don't hear that and be like, oh, plus women and children. No, it's telling you, women and children usually weren't let in on that conversation. And he said, it's this important, get them here. And he decided to talk about the Beatitudes. Have you heard about this? I hate church words sometimes, and this is one of those I've always hated. Beatitudes. <laughs> be my attitude, I don't know anyone to be attitude. It basically says a list like this. Blessed are those who dot, dot, dot. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who mourn for da, 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 da. Hey, do we got a little emergency going down? All right. Let's do it to it. Somebody's app, it's okay. If that's you, just bless your heart and turn it off. In Texas, that means you should have known better. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Tennessee too. All right. Hey girl. Hey girl. Here's the deal. Jesus spent an entire sermon saying blessed are those who. Do you know what the actual origin of that word blessed means? Go back to the original context in its language written. It means happy are those who. Jesus had a joy sermon that's recorded in all of scripture because he knew our happiness is important. It was important to him so much so that he said, hey, this is only one of those rare recorded moments where I'm speaking to 5,000 plus. Let's put this on the pedestal. I need my people to be happy. Jesus is concerned about your happiness, friend. Don't buy the lie that the enemy's tried to tell you that he doesn't care whether you're happy or not. But he just wants you holy. That's the stupidest theology I've ever heard. Sorry if that hurt somebody. But here's the deal. We can be holy because he's holy. There's no striving in our holiness. 
There ain't nothing you got to do to be holy. He's holy. There is something you got to do to be happy. Hey, from the mouths of babes. I don't know what that was, but I was about to have a moment. I felt like you needed to hear that in tongues for a second. I don't know what that was. Happiness is something that our God absolutely sees as a necessity. Because when you face trials of many kind, then you get to take that happiness you've experienced in this life and then consider it joy when everything else comes against you. Did you realize consideration is something learned, not given to you at birth? In order for you to know joy in the middle of your crap, you got to know how to consider that it is joy. You got to have your eyes open and you got to know the word of God so that it can combat anything that the enemy tries to tell you otherwise to make you ineffective. You can't just do it on your own merit, on your own past, on your own good, and on your own experiences of happiness and let that pass you through the, the fire. It says, when you walk through the fire, I will be with you. Though you walk through the waters, I will be with you. I am yours. Here's the deal, y'all. We live in as Christians without the word of God being the anchor that we need to get our hope to be full so we can consider everything joy. You can't have joy without knowing the hope. I know that was a lot just then. If you're taking notes, you're probably confused. So I'll just put it this way. No hope, you ain't got a chance to have joy. If you don't have hope, good luck. Try it. See how life works for you. And I'm talking from a lady that had a failed suicide attempt when I was in college as a junior. And it was because I reached a point where I was hopeless. And I wanted to take my life. But you want to know what I know is true? Today may be your worst day that you're walking through. You're stronger than you think. You're going to be okay. And it may be your worst day, but it ain't your last. You want to know why? Because I know the one that numbers our days. And he numbers them right. He doesn't skip a thing. A lot of us get confused and feel as though joy is for other people and not us. And we feel as though I just, I just, Candace, this all sounds good, but I just don't, I, I'm tired. I'm tired. I want to give you some practical things before you leave tonight that you can do starting tonight and continue it on throughout the rest of your life. Can we do that? All right. If you're writing, this is a point when you need to write. I'm actually offended you haven't been writing, but that's okay. <laughs> I know you're probably like Chewbacca mom. <laughs> I didn't even bring a journal. <laughs> didn't even bring my Bible. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Here's what you need. First thing is this. By and large, for everybody, it matters not what denomination you've come from, that you're in. It doesn't matter if you've been a Christian a long time. If you just found him like four seconds ago in the Lion King story. Okay? Here's the truth. You have to know the word of God. You cannot skip this step. Many of us are surviving off of Instagram memes to be our theology. That's not the same as the word of God. You got to swallow it whole from Genesis to maps or give it back. Maps. <laughs> Some of y'all remember in the old school day, you're like, oh yeah, the maps were in the back. <laughs> now you got more options for Bibles. I had the creepy Bible in KJV with the Jesus illustrations that made me scared. He was like, he was creepy, y'all. Like, as a child, looking at those illustrations, I was like, why are little children on his lap? And why is he, like, I don't know. Maybe the illustrator just had a hard time with the, I don't know. We won't go there. My filter is not good right now. Um, the word of God has to be priority number one. Here's the deal. You can get a prophetic word from a friend, but it has to align with the word of God. You can get a vision from the Almighty himself, but it has to align with the word of God and his character he's already proven. He's never going to go against himself. 
And how do you know him other than to read his word? Other than to really say, this is what you've already given us, so I better love it and get in it and soak it. And just... That's you eating the word of God. But I'm afraid to tell you, most Christians I've encountered have yet to read the Bible, the entirety of it. And they call themselves Christians for 30 to 40 years. And they've never read the entire Bible. Church, let's break that mess. Get in the Bible. Love it. Even when it's weird, because there are some weird, jacked up stories in there. And it's better than any Hollywood script I've ever read. I don't know about y'all, but I get excited when I get to those weird stories. Like, y'all, I'm reading about Lot today. <laughs> Who's the daddy? Um, anyways, just kidding. If you've read your Bible, you got that, and you thought that was highly inappropriate. Sorry. Weird stuff, y'all. But you want to know what I've learned after reading the Bible all the way through and doing it once a year, every year, for four years now? You want to know what I've learned? God doesn't hide our human junk. He doesn't make us look pretty so that we'll want him more. He tells us all of the junk, puts it all out there, and he says, if I can use this, what you got? What you got that I'm going to turn up my nose at you? I've used worse. I've used, I've used more hopeless cases than you. And not only that, I did more through them than I've probably been doing through you. Y'all, the Word of God is not just a book that we get to read that's ancient and irrelevant. <laughs> it is living. It's active. It is able to pierce in places of your soul that you didn't even know existed. Become a lover of the Word of God. Make, make a priority today. Get in it. And here's the deal. I want to give you like some practical stuff, but I'm just going to be honest. I'm not really rigid, so I'm not going to tell you, hey, do a Bible app, do one year, and do it every day. Spend 40 minutes. If you, you're not even good with spending three, okay? So here's what I'm going to tell you is this. Some of y'all may need to be in Romans 8 the entire year. But here's the deal. Instead of you getting into the Word, you need to get that Word into you. Get that word into you. And the next year, try another chapter and see what happens. But I promise you this, you can't take one bite and not want to go back to it. When you're hungry, you've got to get it. Be a lover of the world. Let's break that mess right now. The church, y'all need to know the word of God. I'll say it like this. We need to know the word of God. It is imperative that we know it. You don't know how to fight without it. You don't know how to have joy without it. You don't know how to let that Holy Spirit in without it. I'm, I'm just being honest. You can have experience. And listen, a person with experience is never at the mercy of one without, okay? I get that. But I also know, too, that there's been experiences that I can go to the Word of God and see hope that I didn't even know that there was hope possible. So be lovers of his word before anything else. All right. And then here's another practical thing you can do. Be open. It's a really hard thing, but I promise you, if you do it, you will never regret it. When I say be open, you're listening to a lady stand right before you that was cynical, closed-minded, judgmental, pharisaical, and I was the most closed book you'd ever seen. And I'm telling you, the work of God was trying hard to come upon my life, and I was just like, yes, but does it follow the Romans road of salvation in this moment? 
to lead somebody to you. Do you know what I've seen consistently in scripture by reading it? Everybody that was on the cusp of a breakthrough moment that really had an opportunity to open up their heart to God and they chose the latter, which was not opening their heart. You wonder what they did. There was one commonality between all of them. They deflected and they deferred to religiosity. Look at the woman at the well. She was called out on her junk for all the men she'd been with. And then she starts up a conversation about, well, tell me, Jesus, are we going to worship over here at this mountain? Or is, are the prophets wrong about that? Well, when did you become a Bible scholar at all for you to have that conversation? Do you see what I'm saying? God gives us the opportunity to open up our hearts, confess our junk, and come alignment with him, offering us the bread of life, the living water. And instead, we say, let's start a religious conversation and see if this is worthy or not of you. We got to stop it. Shut it down. Get your heart open. If you're going to shut something down, shut down that junk. The pharisaical spirit that's rampant in the church, shut it down. Open up your heart to him and say, you knew things about me that nobody else knows. What else you got? What else you need to do? What else, what else can I give you? What else can you show me? Because I don't want to be this. I need to remember who I am. Being open is some hard junk for you to do, but it is worth every single second. And I can guarantee one thing, guarantee it. The people that are frustrated with not having joy in their life, it's because they're closed hearted. They haven't allowed themselves to fill. You want to know what people love about Chewbacca mom? She's just having a good old time. Look at her. She just, oh, she in her car doing that mess. <laughs> oh, I wish I was like that. Be open. Open up those closed places that you've had far too long closed to the spirit of God. If he hurts you, a father disciplines those that he loves. It's for your good. He's working things for your good. Last is this, practical response. So I want you to love the word. I want you to be open. And lastly is this, you got to know this. And I'm, I hate being the one to tell you, but you can't have joy without walking through pain. Don't expect a free pass. Hey, hey, hey. If you look at somebody and you think they got the joy of the Lord, don't you ever underestimate the pain that they walk through as well. First chapter of my book, Laugh It Up, is called Finding Happy in the Homeless. Because I was a homeless child at nine years old with my family living in a van at an RV spot taking coin showers. Y'all don't know me. Y'all think you just see some happy lady in her car. Every ounce of joy has been fought for. And I've seen some pain. I've taken care of my grandmother that had Alzheimer's and dementia. I've, I've ta taken her to the place where I, I thought I could restore dignity and change her, her undergarments and help her out of showers. I was the one that had to tell my husband that he lost his father. And then I had to go clean up the vomit and the blood because nobody else in the family was strong enough to. I get, I get, I get what you're saying. No, you got to walk through some pain to experience joy. But know this as well, you are much stronger than you ever thought possible. And I don't know if you get this, but if you've ever geared up for a surgery, how many of y'all know I can go through this for three weeks and it'll change my life and I'll be healthier? Spiritually, we don't have that in us and we need to. 
We need to rise up and say, this season's about to be stinking tough, but I'm going to come out healthier and stronger than I was before I walked in it. And I'm going to come out with some joy as a badge of honor. <laughs> I so desperately want for you to find what you're looking for tonight and why you came here. I'm just a lady that just came and give you my testimony of what I found and what I've seen. And I hope to inspire you to do the work. Ecclesiastes tells us there is a season for everything under heaven. There's a time to mourn and a time to laugh. Some of you may be in your mourning season. Come on, there's joy on the other side. Joy comes in the morning. Not just M-O-R-N-I-N-G, but M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Watch the winds change. Watch the season shift. But be a lover of his word. Stay open and know that you're going to make it out okay. Let's pray. God, I love you so much. I thank you that you are the giver of all good things. God, that you do not withhold anything from those that you love. Mm. Father, these women in this room right now and some of the men back here, they think they're just being cool and serving us. God, I just ask that you just prick our hearts in ways that we didn't even know that needed to be given authority to and openness to. God, I want you to do the things that you set out to do. Your plan is always better than mine, and it's always perfect. God, I know for sure that you are a God that restores. You restore joy. Like David, he even prayed it. Restore the joy of my salvation. So tonight, I know that you are restoring joy of salvation right now and you are casting down lies of the enemy so God I ask that you do that in Jesus name we give you authority to do that and we ask all these things in Jesus name by the power of your Holy Spirit amen you know I'm gonna have my friend Caitlin her name has been changed to joy isn't that funny? Now I have her travel with me because it looks really weird when I walk to places. I bring joy with me. <laughs> I'm going to have her sing with me, just a cappella over you, because here's the first lie that we need to break tonight at this time of decision. Everything, every deception flows from this one falsity that's in our church. God's not good. He is good. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you'll like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I am never It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, and I've seen many searching for answers. Far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. 
It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. We're about to sing this next part, and I think you get it, but I want you to hear this. He's telling you, you don't know who you are? Know that I'm good and you're loved. Some of y'all need that simple step of faith. Just remember he's good and that you're loved. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To sing that for you. frustrated in your spot right here because I feel like we're repeating something over and over again and it's belaboring a moment that we're just trying to get through but I'm going to tell you your breakthrough about some of y'all needing to be open is going to happen in this song right now it ain't about singing the same chorus because it's pretty it's about actually rising up in belief that he's a good father and he hasn't left you a single moment of your life that you can trust that he loves you I don't know but some of y'all are saying I need to be open if that's you get up on your feet and raise your hands in ways you've never done because your openness starts here in this room come on you're a good good father Thank you. 